she will be presenting an introduction to iron sources. Nadia, you have Hello? the floor. Can you yes, hear we can me? hear you. Can you see my screen with the presentation? Yes. So we will continue for these 15 minutes as planned for your talk. And we will shorten the coffee break given that um, it is an online uh, event. Yes. Thank you, Nadia. So thanks a lot for inviting me to give this lecture about ion source. And um, of course, in 15 minutes, I, I will try to, to give you an overview. And um, then, so as uh, already Mario said, I will give a first general overview today. And then on Friday, we will talk more deeply about ECR ion sources. So in the first part, what I will try to, to explain you, first of all, what is an ion source and how we can build uh, actually an ion source, what are the relevant parts to, to get an ion source, and which are the relevant parameters, uh, especially related to accelerator physics and also with some let's say reference to medical application uh, seeing the topic of the school and the uh, different type of ion source that, that we can build and have and of course which is the underlying physics and for, for our ion sources and <clears throat> then i will show you some real medical application and challenges how this the ion source topic relates to the whole accelerator let's say stability so, of course, the first question that uh, we want to answer is what is a nion source? It's the first uh, fundamental element that comes when you build an accelerator because it allows you to generate the ion beam. And of course, in, especially in case of medical requirements, in case of medical facilities, you need, the ion source needs to fulfill certain stability conditions. And in terms of, of course, then also what is the desired ion species, what is the desired uh, charge state that you want to reach, and what is the intensity and energy that you need. Uh, the ion source as well have many application in research industry and of course medical, and there are several types available. So we can have from, from the very small, uh, smallest ion source, here I show a picture of um, the one of Hekin, which is a 2.45 gigahertz ECR ion source, you see it's smaller than a pen. Then we also have, uh, for example, the super nanogun of Medaustron that it's quite bigger. And uh, of course, then you have also, let's say, application of ion source, for example, in clean rooms, uh, where uh, through the ion source, you want to do, for example, some ion milling um, experiments. And this is the xenon focused ion source that is present at IST. And this is the, um, also here you can see the abyss that we also have at the tube. So of course we can go to from very small to very big and also the range of charge state and current can be very different. And what do we need basically, first of all, to, to build such an ion source? First of all, we need a vacuum vessel where we will inject some material or a neutral gas. And this is where we will create our ions. Second of all, we need then a power source or an electromagnetic force to really create those ions. And this we, we are going to inject it in the ion source. And then eventually we might want to make use of sophisticated magnets to confine our, let's say, plasma state or the ions that we are having in the vacuum vessel to have a better stability and favor the ionization process. And finally, we need a way to extract those ions. And uh, once this happens, uh, let's say we can consider the main part of, of our ion source. Uh, beside this part, of course, uh, we have other different system. Of course, we have power supply, vacuum system, cooling system. So of course, the source comes with a lot of subcomponents. And um, once the beam is extracted, of course, 
then you can start to do the consideration about the further transmission into your accelerator. This is an example of the super nanogun, just to get you a real idea of, uh, of uh, what do you have in an ion source. So you have uh, the vacuum vessel where you create your plasma and from which you will uh, inject basically your gas. In our case, it's the hydrogen or carbon and also a certain electromagnetic force, as you remember, I told you before. And by this combination, you can create the condition inside the vacuum vessel to have a plasma, which will allow you to create the ions you need. And once you, you have your plasma state, within the plasma, you will have the required ions, which you are going to extract. And this you do it via an extraction voltage, high extraction voltage. And for the super nanogun, this is done by a, a cooler, uh, which is put at around two kilovolt. And then you, you have already a first focusing element for your beam. And after that, you are going to select the needed species via spectrometer magnet. Because of course, uh, in the, let's say, ion source, you will generally have a mixture of different ion species. So you might then want to uh, only select a desired ion species, and this you can do via spectrometer magnet. And uh, so, which are therefore the relevant parameter? Well, first of all, the charge state that you want to create that can, can go to single ionized, uh, let's say, ions up to very high ionization charge state, let's say, argon 18 plus or even xenon 30 plus. And the, also the intensity can go from a few uh, hundred of micron to tens of tens of milliamp. And then, of course, you want an application that can meet both requirements. But these two first requirements would always clash in the sense you always have to find a compromise between high charge state and intensity because you cannot boost both. And I will show you later why this cannot happen. And so what are indeed the other uh, relevant parameters, which I already mentioned? Well, the particle intensity that comes from the number of ions that you have. Oh, sorry, here uh, there is a slight typo. This is divided by time. I will correct this, sorry. And uh, then, you, of course, the total energy that you are going to extract from the ion source and also the energy that you will have uh, to per nucleon. And this, this energy that you are going to extract from your ion source will strongly depend on your extraction voltage. So to make you a, a real example, uh, for example, at Medaustron, we extract ion beam with an energy of 8 kV per nucleon. Why? Where does this number come from? from? For example, for carbon-4+, plus, uh, we apply an extra, um, uh, at the source body uh, a voltage of 24 kilovolt, and this will basically then give us the energy of our beam. But be careful, this is a bit now, this is not the, let's say, the voltage that we apply, uh, let's say, at extraction. It's really the whole source body is put at 24 kilovolt. While then we need a really small, uh, let's say, extraction voltage to favor the extraction of these ions. And of course, what uh, is the other relevant parameter uh, aside from intensity and energy is the emittance. Uh, Marius has already talked about it a bit. It's, it's a nasty discussion always. Of course, traditionally, we know that the emittance is defined as the, as the six-dimensional volume limited by a contour of particle density in the phase space. And this volume is conserved and is defined by the Lubin theorem. But uh, since this was already a bit tackled from Marius, I, I thought maybe that I give you a bit of more real example. So for the ion source, of course, the emittance is a very important parameter and needs to be always measured to characterize our ion source. And why it is important? It is important in our case for the transmission efficiency further in the accelerator. 
uh, in our case, but also in general for the spot size requirement for the brightness in particle experiment or for ion milling and for the low luminosity for collider. So of course, here we could give a whole lecture about the emittance, but I wanted to show you uh, some real emittance measurements that come, for example, from the new super nano gun that we have at Medauston. So this is, as um, already Marius mentioned, it, um, I will skip this, maybe it was already discussed because we don't have a lot of time. Um, so this is the emittance that the, you define geometrically, and then it helps to define your twist, the half and beta, that will then define your convergent or divergent beam. This is, of course, something also in ion source is very important and used. And this you can see then in reality. So what I wanted to, to show you here, this is, for example, the emittance measured from a helium beam in the vertical plane. And this looks like, like a good emittance, and it has some of a ellipse shape. But we can also have more nasty shape. Uh, this is, for example, the emittance that we measure from the ion source uh, for carbon for class. And then, of course, uh, the more nasty the shape is, the more tricky will be to get the beam to the RFQ. Or for sure, what will then matter is how you really tune your ion source in order to get the best um, transmission efficiency from the ion source to the next aperture on your accelerator. In our case, it's the R uh, RFQ, so the radio frequency quadrupole, but it can also be another type of aperture. So this is then in reality from the source, we do not have perfect elliptical beam and we have to deal with it. And of course, this then affects our transmission. Um, and the other relevant parameter, well, the brightness for some application Actually, the emittance is, um, let's say, translated in brightness, the purity, because as I mentioned before, you always have a mixture of different ion species, but you might want to have just one selected one. And the more you can produce of this particular species, the more pure is your ion source. And of course, the efficiency. This is another important, uh, let's say, parameter in the ion physics. Uh, in the ion source, uh, let's say, community. So how much of the ions you can actually produce respect to your neutral ions? This is always referred as the efficiency of our ion source. So this was a bit to give you a glance uh, of which are the relevant parameters that the ion source expert work with. So as I mentioned, intensity, energy, emittance, and especially also in our case, efficiency. And of course, another, let's say, uh, nasty uh, problem for ion source, one thing to take into account is, of course, ch space charge, because what you extract from the beam, you will have, of course, a uh, different uh, charge state, but you will have a lot of charge with the same, let's say, charge, let's say, many particles with the same charge, and they will repel each other. So when they will move, um, they will generate basically a repulsion um, force, and this will defocus your beam. And this is, of course, not, not very good, especially because this is uh, very important at low energy. So you can see here a uh, plot. This is the perbeans. It's um, a way to define your, um, let's say, spa space, space charge effect. And you can see that it decreases uh, with increasing energy. So actually, the space charge is a topic in case of low intensity. And it will also affect your emittance, because the emittance will grow. And again, this, this is a topic then for further uh, transmission in your accelerator. And uh, yeah, also here we will need a whole lecture on space charge. So I also here put uh, a reference to a lecture, uh, actually one complete lecture on space charge that you can look up for the cast lecture that was done really on ion source. 
to give you an example, this is some of the simulation we do at Medaustron. Uh, this is done with trace. Um, and you can see, for example, if you do not include a space charge, this is a, these are all the elements in our accelerator from the source up to the RFQ. And you can see, for example, if you keep the same strength for your quadrupole, you can see these are triplets, you have a certain beam, uh, let's say, path with, um, with no space charge. And with some space charge, you will see that the beam will tend to be focused. Of course, you can adjust it compensating with the strength. But this was just to show you in real, so in real, how this space charge will affect your beam. So it will actually tend to the focus your beam, and you will need to compensate with focusing elements like the quadruple. So, and uh, yeah, one, let's say, before going to the, let's say, next big topic, uh, so to, to explain you a bit the underlying physics of ion source, I wanted to also mention the different type of ion source that we have, why? Because based on what I said before, the requirements for your ion source in terms of charge state, intensity, uh, you will select different type of ion source. And the driving ports, the one that I mentioned before, the one that triggers your ionization can come from different source. It can be an RF, it can be a laser, it can be done by a discharge. So depending on that, we will define different type of ion source. And uh, in general, uh, for medical application, uh, we use the ECRIS. I will talk about them later on when we see the second part of my lecture. And it also depends, of course, how you are going to create your ionization. So, of course, the classification can always slightly vary. I now put it here depending on the main, let's say, what is the main ionization method. So you can either have electron impact ionization, you can photoinduce the ionization. This is, for example, uh, done by laser ion source. And then you have other type of sources. We, we in accelerator physics are not very interested in them. So surface and thermal ionization or charge ex exchange ion source. So we are mostly interested in the first category of ion source and are the ones where the electron impact ionization is used to produce actually the ions. And of course, uh, you might want to produce uh, the highest charge state, but you, might, you need to overcome the ionization potential. And this ionization potential can be very high so what do you do when you want to create uh, ions with a very high charge state? You, you have to basically find some better and optimizing way to really get, for example, argon 18 plus. And besides that, uh, during the ionization via electron impact, you will always have some losses which, because in this mixture, you will have some many different type of atomic processes. So you will have collision on the wall, you will have radiative recombination, dielectric recombination and charge exchange collision. So <clears throat> you have to find an optimum way to generate the desired ion charge state in your source. And you can of course apply certain optimization. Um, we need to start concluding so that we can take a few questions. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so what I want to come to here is that uh, a, a way to get the, the required charge state is by using the step by step ionization. And this you can do by creating a state of plasma. And therefore, if you have a plasma state, you will favor more collision. And by the step-by-step -step ionization, we, you will reach the required uh, charge state. And yeah, this I can maybe then again point out on the second part of my lecture. 
basically the plasma state is the fourth state of matter. You will have a mixture of uh, electron and ion, uh, uh, electron and ions that, um, let's say, they um, uh, behave like an oscillator harmonic. And in this, within this state, you can basically create, uh, generally, this is what we use, the plasma state in the ion source uh, to create the desired ion charge state. And uh, plus magnetic confinement, of course, because this will help to favor the ionization process. And of course, uh, your plasma needs to be stable because you will want to have a certain efficiency, as I mentioned, but it will always be a compromise because the mean charge state will always be uh, equal to the electron density per the confinement time. But the in intensity that you will get out is proportional the, to the electron density in your plasma divided the confinement time. So from here, you can see why you have to take the compromise basically between charge state and intensity. And yeah, for, for the medical treatment, as I say, uh, we look at stability. So how does it translate? We do not need, uh, we really need ion source that are stable over months. Here you can see, for example, the, uh, the extracted current uh, from our carbon for plus source over 24 hours. But we also monitor it over long term and you can see how actually the intensity degrades. So you will always need to recorrect your uh, source set point to basically keep the same uh, intensity. And um, yeah, this is basically, I just wanted to show you how a source you tune can basically influence your whole accelerator. So before the source recommissioning, we had a certain transmission from the Lebit to the Mebit and from the Mebit to the main ring in the synchrotron up to extraction. And after recommissioning the source, we actually improved the, the overall transmission. So to summarize, of course, it was very short. Uh, I gave you a glance of what is the ion source uh, physics board. Uh, I showed you a lot of many physical process you, and that's why I suggest maybe that you can dig in in further reading. For example, there is a whole CAS, uh, let's say, lecture session that is dedicated to ion source. And I will have, I, I put the link in here. So thanks for your attention and sorry that I went a bit out of time. No, not at all. Thank you so much for that very interesting introduction to ion sources. We will take a few questions um, and uh, um, we, will, we will then break up for a coffee break and start a bit later. Uh, if you could please stop sharing the screen so that we can post the questions. We still see the presentation. Please switch off your mics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would like to invite our uh, attendees to switch off their mics, please. Okay, Nadia, um, can you, would you like to have a look at these questions? Yes, do you compensate for the bad emittance of the extracted fluid with other parameters? Uh, well, yes, of course. So you can do certain actions. Um, because when you basically tune your source, you have a multi-space parameter because you will need to tune, for example, in case of ACRIS, your RF frequency around the one that you would really to trigger the resonance. You will need to tune the power. You will also adjust some other parameter at extraction. So let's say the extraction voltage, and you, you will have certain focusing element already at extraction, which at low energy are produced by electric fields. So of course you can compensate for bad emittance by uh, source tuning. But of course the emittance will be what it is because it comes from, from, from the shape of your beam. 
so you can compensate for it, but you will still need to deal with this nasty shape. You cannot completely overcome it. So what is the emittance of the beam from synchrotron? Well, this I, I would rely to the next speaker that will talk about synchrotron. I think it's tomorrow, right? Yes, that's right. To produce carbon ions, I assume that the common used source is a gas. There are several carbon containing gas. Which one is the best candidate for carbon beam? I mean, there are two schools uh, to produce carbon beam in the ion source community. So one is to use methane, which has certain variable condition, and the other is to use the gas mixing. So we at Medaustron use the gas mixing. So we use a mixture of CO2 plus helium. And the helium allows you basically to favor the collision in the plasma to produce more carbon for plus, which is the species we are interested in. So there are mainly these two types of gas that you can use to produce uh, the carbon beam, either methane or CO2 plus helium. How can laser be an ion source since it consists of photon? Well, basically what you do, uh, you will send your laser on a certain target. The target can be a gas, it can be a, a, a solid material. So what happens if you will send your laser, for example, on a target? It will create ablation. First of all, you will remove certain material. So the, the photon will transfer some energy to the few free electrons that you have in the, in the material, and they will start to evaporate. And also there, after this first phase, you, will, you, you might create the condition for a plasma. And of course, again, this plasma will be formed by a mixture of ions and electrons. So this is how this can happen. So the, by, let's say, laser ablation process, for example. Uh, is there another type? Uh, is there another type of ion source? Uh, I don't know in which sense uh, is this meant. There are several types, but as I mentioned in my talk, the main uh, family are the discharge ion source, RF ion source, plasma ion source, and then you have other different type of ion source mainly for industrial application, surface ion sources, thermal one, and so on. But I don't know if the question is too generic here, so I'm not sure. Why, why are you interested in carbon for plus rather than full strip? Well, uh, this is actually the, the carbon six plus is the one we are going to use then in our accelerator because for, for the source we use, for example, for medical application, as I mentioned before, the more stable it is, the, the easier. So the, the lower the charge state, the easier it is to have a stable ion source. But then, so in our case, it will be not efficient to directly extract carbon six plus. So we extract carbon four plus, and then by a stripping foil, we send through the further accelerator, we send the carbon six plus. So this is indeed what is then used uh, in the accelerator. I suggest we stop here, Nadia. Thank you so much for answering these questions for your talk. Um, we, will, we will have the opportunity of discussing further uh, in the afternoon. And uh, Nadia will also be with us again on Friday, I believe, for a second part of um, um of 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 uh, her lecture on 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 ion